The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Mic check. Cool. Ready to go? All right. Well, hey, thanks everyone for uh, coming to Triple Camp South Carolina. My name is Jason Hibbets. I work at Red Hat. And my main function, uh, my main duty is to work on opensource.com. I'm the project manager for that, which means I do lots of stuff. Um, if the site goes down, they call me. Luckily, that doesn't happen very often. Um, so uh, the core functionalities of uh, being a project manager, I work with Acquia, who is our, um, who hosts our site and does our support. So I manage that relationship. Um, I look for a lot of content that goes on the site, and I manage the community. Now, I don't all do all the three of those that well, so um, it's a work in progress. Now, today, we're going to talk about opensource.com because I do that every day as kind of the case study for creating um, online community the open source way. <clears throat> so if you haven't been to the site, um, the high level stuff, it's where we're looking at open source beyond technology. And for a lot of folks, um, particularly at conferences like this where you are already understand open source, um, I like to say that this is just another tool for your tool belt. When somebody doesn't understand open source, this is a resource that you can send them to. Uh, I like to say that it's a translation tool. So there may be folks uh, in other industries, like the auto industry, that's using collaboration, but they don't call it open source. So we kind of translate some of that terminology. Um, just because I never know if I'm going to have live internet or I'm going to have problems with it. This is our, our home page. And we're talking about uh, the open source way across six major topics, business, education, government, health, law, and life. And on the back end, you'll see here in a little bit, those are all organic groups um, on the Drupal side. Uh, life is kind of the hodgepodge, so if it doesn't fit in the, uh, the first five, it goes into our life community. And we're talking about music, video, sustainable energy, all those type of things. Um, and so I'm going to use this term, the open source way, throughout the presentation. And really, it's just a collection of all this terminology that we're familiar with um, from the open source development model. It's transparency, it's sharing, it's rapid prototyping. All the things that have made uh, the development model successful for open source apply to those different areas in business, education, and so forth. One of my favorite ones is uh, I like to talk about failing faster. It's kind of a different iteration of uh, rapid prototyping. And uh, the, the other part of this is to succeed faster as well, right? So you have to be willing to try new things. Um, and some of them are going to fail. And you're going to learn from those so that you can figure out what works. Uh, we do this a lot in online community building. And I'm going to go into a lot more details um, on some of the things that we've tried and have not been successful with and some of the things that we're continuing to, uh, to do that were successful. The other one, um, the other kind of large overarching principle that we, we go with is defaulting to open. Uh, this is more of a, a Red Hat, it, it's part of our Red Hat DNA, it just kind of translates really well over to the open source way, uh, where if we have a question of should we, should we open up this process or should we, um, should we share out our publishing calendar, the answer would be yes, default to open, and then talk about the, the consequences and risks of doing that. All right, so opensource.com. Um, how did it go from an idea to a website to an online community? We started it, uh, we launched the website January 25th, 2010, so about a year and a half ago. Uh, we spent about six months building the site, gathering um, uh, some initial content and, and doing some initial community building internally. We, um, if you're going to do any sort of community building whether it's in real life or online, um, you should always ask the question, do I build my own community or should I join an existing one? This is part of the due diligence piece. Um, we did our research and we found that nobody else uh, that we could find was talking about the open source way across those different uh, business, education, uh, government communities. There were kind of little pieces of it here and there, but not as a collection. And so uh, we made the decision to build a community. 
and you can probably think of different examples in your own world where it's kind of a, a build versus join. Um, what we needed, I call it the three C's. Uh, we needed the content management system, because um, on the next slide you'll see that we believe content is king. Uh, we needed um, content to go in that content management system, and we also needed a community. As you know, there are numerous content management systems out there, both proprietary and open source. Um, the first rule for us is that it had to be open source. Um, we looked at all the different things. We looked at Joomla, WordPress, um, Plone, uh, and Drupal were the, kind of our top four that we investigated. Um, but once we made that decision, did I skip a slide? No. Um, yeah, once we made that decision based on, on these things, <coughs> um, we chose Acquia to host our Drupal. And a lot of the things that we looked at that set it apart from the other uh, content management systems, WordPress, if we wanted to fire up a blog, we probably would have picked that and gone out the gate in a couple weeks, and that would have been all she wrote. But we wanted to build a community, and we were very, very conscious of that, and Drupal provided a lot of the modules um, and other pieces that we needed to build that community, or build our community. Uh, we also looked at job trends. So a lot of people don't consider this, but <clears throat> we found a website, indeed.com, and you can, you can go there and type in almost any keyword. We typed in WordPress, we typed in Drupal, we looked at all the things, um, all the different uh, management systems, <clears throat> and Drupal was kind of up and to the right, meaning there was a lot of demand for Drupal jobs. And I was at uh, DrupalCon earlier here in Chicago, and there were the buzz was that there are so many Drupal jobs that are needed that there's not enough Drupal expertise to fill them. Um, so if you're looking for a job or know somebody does, I would recommend that they might want to get into Drupal. So that's a great thing. Um, we also, we wanted to focus on the content and, ho and managing the community. We didn't want to focus on managing Drupal. So we were looking for folks um, to host our applica host application and also do the administration for us. We're learning as we go. Um, but we, we wanted to focus on our mission, which is um, on uh, promoting the open source way. As I alluded to earlier, content is king. Uh, we wouldn't have a community without the content that we produce and the content that they help us produce and the content that they comment on and interact with. So I'll go back in time. Uh, this was about six months before we went live on the web. We uh, kicked off an internal project team, probably about six to eight folks. Um, within Red Hat that were responsible for, you know, defining what the website was going to be, defining um, what we, the community, what we wanted the community to look like, and basically our overarching goal is to attract new users to open source. So again, using that translation tool of, hey, you're doing stuff, you're doing collaboration, you're using transparency, by the way, that's the open source way. So kind of making that bridge and, and uh, bridging the gap. We conducted an internal pilot. We got about 100 Red Hatters worldwide um, to help us out. And we had uh, about an eight week period where we would give them a new task every week that ranged from reviewing our terms and conditions of the website. Very boring stuff, but very important because they actually helped us figure out um, a couple things and that, that we modified before we put that out to our users. <clears throat> um, they helped us review our wireframes, and they helped us do kind of the UI and the usability testing. Uh, they helped us do test the site functionality, uh, the first version of it. Um, over around the December time frame before we launched, <clears throat> we uh, had a kind of an, an invite-only external pilot. So we, we had uh, some trusted folks we let into the site to see what it was, and um, mostly because we wanted to kind of have a spark and have... Uh, you know, have that kind of launch moment. And then uh, on January 25th uh, last year, we opened it up to the world, um, and we have opensource.com. So what are we doing to build online community? Uh, I like to kind of classify it as a, as a three-pronged approach here. Um, one, focused on social media, which is a great tool for us to get the word out on our content and also to interact with our users. Um, I call it old school ways, and I'll go into more of those details, and also events like POSCON, uh, POSCON and Southeast Linux Fest. So we're on social media on all these great outlets. Uh, Twitter by far is the most successful one for us. Um, I'll show you some numbers here in a minute. Um, and then 
on the site itself, we have um, the little share buttons that every other website has where you could, they can share the content out. And that seemed to be really successful for us. So on Twitter, uh, we recently broke 4,000 followers. Um, we tried to be very conscious of kind of best practices. Um, so we, we actually have two accounts. We have an open source feeds account, which is basically an RSS feed of all of our content. Um, we don't really manage it. Some people follow it. Um, we just publish out every time we have a new article, it's, it goes, it's pretty, it's kind of automated. But we spend a lot of time and resources on the open source way account and we uh, promote other people's content. We um, interact with the Follow Friday stuff, so we promote our users via Twitter, and we actually interact and engage. So one example is this week, um, a designer pinged us and said, hey, why isn't opensource.com using open fonts on their website? And I was like, well, why don't I ask them what we should use? And so I responded to, to this person, and I said, well, what would you use? And they responded back and said, I'd use you know, something neato, something. And so I was like, all right, well, I'll take that back to my design team and figure out if we can use an open source font on our website. Um, so th like instances like that where we're actually getting feedback and, uh, and interacting with the users. Facebook, we actually haven't really figured out yet, um, particularly for our, um, for our audience. We're almost at 2,000 uh, likes on our page. It's mostly a content stream of our, of, you know, a stream of our content. Um, but what, what we're starting to see is, um, if you actually go to our Facebook page today, we are here at this event, we took a whole bunch of pictures and we posted all those pictures online on, on our Facebook page. Um, so we're trying things like that to see if we can get that usage. I think we got about um, 10 to 15 more likes um, since we posted the pictures from this event. So we're starting to see maybe that's a little bit of traction. We're also looking at it to, um, to promote events. So they already have a, Facebook has an events module that you can go in and um, type stuff in. And we're gonna promote our webcast via that uh, mechanism. And also see if we can promote other like real events, something like this, like hey, we're gonna be at Southeast Linux Fest. Let us know if you're gonna be there and you know, find us at the booth kind of thing. And then a, a, a really phenomenal resource that doesn't get a t enough attention is our Flickr page. Uh, for the most part, most of the images in this slideshow are um, created by our design team internally at Red Hat, and they're all released under Creative Commons license, which means um, you can reuse the images, you can repurpose the images as long as you give us credit for it. And if you go to our Flickr page, uh, it's just hundreds of images um, that other people are starting to use in other publications, which is really cool. The old school way, um, we were very lucky to inherit a very large email list from a former Red Hat property called Red Hat Magazine. We had about 400,000 people on that list. So when we launched on January 25th, uh, we hit up that list and got a very large spike in traffic and uh, Drupal did very well uh, from a performance perspective. Uh, and we continue to nurture that mailing list. Um, we were doing it on a monthly basis but our content volume has increased, so we're actually in, in the middle of doing a split test where we're doing, we took half the list and we're emailing them every other week, and we took the other half of the list and we're emailing them weekly. And so we're gonna see, um, we're gonna monitor our traffic and use the tools um, that were to track those things and see which one was more effective. Um, we're basically, the weekly one, we're not doing, it's not just a dump of our, all of our content, it's the top five articles from that week, so we're kind of, we're kind of giving them the things that we think they might like. And as any user, as, as the way I look at my stuff, uh, I think most people do this, you just kind of, when you get those emails, you kind of scan the headlines and click on what's interesting. Um, so I think most people kind of react in that same way. Uh, we're also on IRC. Uh, we, it's basically kind of a back channel to ask questions. Um, we're on Freenode, uh, open source, pound open source.com. Um, most of the admins or channel moderators are there. And um, you know, come and say hi to us. We, just, we have a lot of fun there. Uh, it's actually kind of quiet, but um, a lot of people will poke in and ask questions and things like that. And then we also use the kind of traditional community mailing list. We have got one that's site-wide, uh, OSTC-list, and um, anybody can join that, and we'll toss out questions like, hey, we're thinking about changing how comments are done. What do you think? Um, we just earlier alluded to, but uh, we launched a points and badge system, and we released our first draft of that to that audience and got feedback and were able, was able to actually make the um, points and badge system better. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. 
And then some of our individual communities have their own lists. The education, the open education community uh, is great. They, they have offline conversations, they interact, they are helping others find content, and they're actually helping um, with kind of the open education movement through that mailing list. So that's a really um, popular one if you're interested in education. And then, um, I kind of already mentioned this, but also with, um, with events. So we look at different events that we could attend, um, see where, new where, can we, where we can reach new audiences, um, where we can reach audiences like you where we're somewhat familiar with open source, but you may not know about opensource.com. And then we do uh, a monthly webcast. And we focus on, for, the, for now, we've been focused mostly on business, like kind of authors and things like that. We brought in uh, General Hugh Shelton, uh, former General Hugh Shelton from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, um, talking about open leadership and leadership in the military. We've had Charlene Lee, who wrote, um, co-wrote Groundswell, and she also wrote a book called Open Leadership. Um, and coming up this month, we've got Daniel Pink, uh, who's, a, who's another author. Uh, one of my favorite ones that we did uh, recently was a, kind of a tutorial on open source music. And we, have a, we had a guy who works at Red Hat who, in his spare time, knows all these great tools to do open music with, and that's like recording your music and manipulating it and producing it. And so we've got a webcast where he walks you through all those tools and um, shows you how to do it. Really great stuff. And then uh, community in person is the best thing. This is actually a, a shot from uh, DrupalCon Chicago where they rented out the, um, uh, one of the museums there where the T-Rex, actually the T-Rex is um, on the other end of this picture. Um, but you know, just meeting people and tell them about the site and this is how I, I get to meet a lot of authors that, that write for us and I finally get to go to events and they're like, oh, that's what you look like. Thanks for you know, doing those articles for us. Um, so that's always fun. All right, and then um, I'm gonna transition here and get a little bit more into the Drupal stuff for you. Um, how do we engage people once they get to the site? So we do all this work, emails, um, Twitter, to get people there. So what are, we, what are they gonna do when they get there? Well, one, we hope they read our stuff, because that's really what we want. But um, I, this is a screenshot of, uh, of a poll that we threw up. And um, just a couple highlights here. I mentioned the share buttons. So we've got the, the five most popular ones for us. We actually did, um, when we deployed that, we did a lot of research on what our users were already doing so we had the, the first version of the share button that had like 200 options under it. Nobody clicked on it. I wonder why, because there was too many options. So we looked at, we looked at our data and we said, well, which, what are people using already? Um, Twitter obviously was, was a big one, Facebook, um, but they're also using um, Reddit and um, StumbleUpon. And so we, threw, we just said, here's the top five. And we still have that other share button at the bottom, still not getting a lot of clicks. So um, we're conscious of what our users are doing. Polls are a great way to engage our users. Um, it's really simple. They, fill, they click one button and they hit vote and it's done and they're engaged. We're, we actually, <clears throat> we try to tie that back to some existing content um, or a strategy that we're, we're recently discussing is trying to create future content out of, based on the information from the polls. We did that one um, sometime last summer. Uh, one of our authors, uh, basically put up a poll that said, why do you still have an iPhone? And he gave a couple options. And then he wrote an article about open source phones and why, you know, basically like Androids and, and things like that, of, you know, why do you really still need an iPhone? There are open alternatives. And he referenced the poll data that he collected. Uh, also, uh, just like any other uh, tutorial or um, periodical on the website, uh, we allow people to comment. Um, that's a great way to get discussions going. One of the things that we do like to do is to create conversation on the site. Um, we want to be seen as thought leaders in open source uh, and thought leaders um, promoting the open source way and getting um, users to talk about it on the site is a great way for us. Um, some of the barriers that we have is actually contributing to the site. So we still haven't really figured this out. We have, um, we outline how folks can create images and submit them to us and we outline how folks can write blogs for us and, and write posts, um, but it's not an easy task, right? Because not everybody can write. And, or not everybody can write well, and not everyone can write to the audience that um, we're trying to reach. So those are um, really big barriers for us, um, but we're still trying to figure it out. When we had our one year anniversary earlier this year in January, uh, instead of kind of tooting our own horn and 
saying, hey, we're one years old, we made it. Um, I always make the reference, if you have kids and you made it to one year, it's not about the kid, it's about you making it the year um, as parents. So, um, so we said, instead of focusing on us, let's focus on our community. So we did, um, we did two things. We, we launched a contributor spotlight, and we also simultaneously launched a points and badge system. Um, and I'll talk about some of the modules that we use there uh, momentarily. But um, this uh, contributor spotlight is on the homepage of our site. Uh, we select a user. Uh, right now we're doing it every two weeks. We talk about them. We um, let them, you know, if they want to highlight something that they're working on personally, we'll let them do that. Um, and we also try to tie it back to something that they've contributed on the site, whether it's a, a really good comment or an article that they've written. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the points and badges, we, we came up with kind of the, the rules, so to speak. So how would you earn points? How do you get points? Those type of things. We released that early to our community and said, here's what we're thinking. What do you think? And we got some great feedback. Um, how our points and badge system works, you have to be logged in in order to accumulate points. Um, if you write an article, you get 30 points. If you uh, produce a poll, you get 15 points. If you make a comment, you get five points. And if you do anything that's clickable, like voting or um, thumbs up on the comments, you get one point. What, um, the other thing that we're trying to do, I haven't quite gotten to it yet, is uh, if somebody clicks on the share buttons, we want to give them a point for that. So I think there's going to be some, some uh, sort of scripting involved. So I've got to figure that piece out. Um, or my friends at Acquia have to figure that piece out for us. Um, so this is really popular. We actually saw our, um, our page views jump up after we launched this. Um, so we get more folks logging into the system. And people like points. Like, we're not giving them anything. Like, there's no prize at the end. <laughs> but people love getting points. Uh, we made four different classifications. Uh, when you log in, when you register your account with the site, you become uh, a newbie. Once you get 10 points, you're a um, uh, community member. And then once you get, I think it's 30 points, you'll be our uh, open enthusiast. And if you get over 100, you're a rock star. Everyone loves to be a rock star. We, um, we kind of figured out what those levels were based on kind of participation. So getting 10 points is fairly easy on the site. You can, do, you can produce two comments, or you can do a comment and, and rate and vote on things um, to get those points. At the same time, we actually get hit with a lot of spam, believe it or not. Um, Malum is our friend, but Malum doesn't catch everything. So um, we we looked at our data again, and we realized that we were getting hit with something that's called a black hat SEO. It's where people register with your site so that they can get a link on your on their user profile page, basically for Google rankings and things like that. So what we did is we, um, if you are not a community member, so if you don't have the 10 points, your user profile doesn't display your website and your biography um, on the user profile. Once you get 10 points, then we uh, will show that information. So. I don't know if it's impacted the spammers. I've seen one or two sneak through that I've had to manually uh, take care of. But um, I think it's preventing some of the Black Hat SEO, that, at least at the levels that we were seeing, which was uh, at some points 10 to 15 an hour. And still, Drupal was doing great as, from a performance perspective. Um, so what are, we, what are we thinking about as far as uh, engagement on the site? I, mentioned, I kind of hinted earlier that all of our we call them channels slash communities. They're basically organic groups on the back end. And so we control who is part of those groups right now. And we're considering just opening it up and saying, put a big join, join this group. What we need to do is figure out what they would do once they join the group. So if you're familiar with um, g.o, uh, group, um, groups.drupal.org, you can go find any group, you can join it, you, and there's things you can do there. So we need to figure out what things people would do on our site. Um, with using organic groups as the back end. So I'm open to suggestions. Um, we're also looking to kind of remove some of the barriers to, to logging in. Um, currently, we have the straight registration form that comes with Drupal, and we integrated uh, OpenID. So we're considering you know, doing the Facebook and Twitter login just to kind of, again, lower the barriers to participation. And then also your ideas, right? We're always looking for your ideas. Um, we're asking folks what we're looking at what other Drupal communities are doing, what other sites are doing with Drupal. Um, and we 
And as, as is the open source way, we're sharing that information and, and we are going to borrow many ideas. Okay, so here are some of the specific modules uh, that we have in use on the site. Uh, we're using Apache Solar for search, uh, Malum, as I mentioned, to protect ourselves from spam, uh, organic groups to basically bucket our content and our communities, uh, user points to do the point accumulation, and user badges to do the, the display um, of the badges. Um, oh, we use Trigger, there's a Trigger module that we use um, that is basically behind the scenes for the badges, and so that when you get to those different point levels, um, the trigger events bump you up from uh, open enthusiast to rock star, things like that. Uh, we do a little bit of integration with Twitter on the site, so we'll have our latest tweet will show up on this little um, block over here. And then we have a, um, the vote up, vote down module on the comments. We, we call them thumbs, so you can thumb up, thumb down. Uh, in the open source world, it's also plus one or minus one. Um, and so I, I always forget to uh, tell you, I'm not like a Drupal module guy. Like I don't go install modules. I rely right now on Acquia to help us make some of those selection. As you are probably well aware, there are a ton of modules out there. So we really rely on them to kind of guide us down uh, which ones we should use and which ones they would recommend that we do for you know, whatever goal we're trying to achieve. I am mostly um, a content and admin on the site. So I, am, uh, I do not know very specifics about the details as the, the previous session that I was in where they're giving you all the, the tips and tricks of the modules. Uh, a great resource, and actually, um, if you were at the keynote last night, um, Spot mentioned this. Uh, it's an open source handbook called the Open Source Way Handbook. Uh, it was built by the community, and one of the things that I like to highlight is how do you loosely organize a community? There's a whole chapter on that. One of the things that they recommend is to make a list of to-do things, things that need to be done for your community, and uh, you know, be very transparent about it, but then also start putting names against it. So if you've got somebody in your community that's working on something, put their name against it. It kind of creates a little bit of accountability um, for both for them and for you. Um, and we've tried this on our uh, on our life channel, our life community, where we said, here are the topics we're interested in, we're looking for writers. And um, we made a little bit of progress with that, but it didn't work out too well in this case. So we may not have done it right, we may need to try a different version of that. Um, but like I said, writing is hard, so we may want to think about how, what kind of other things we can do to make a list so that we can get some participation. So, um, so what's next for you folks in the audience? Um, if you haven't been to the site, Go check it out, register, uh, and participate. Participate with what's interesting to you. Um, you know, there are a lot of other, there are a lot of news and, and things happening on the web. It's hard to break through that with, with, um, with all the chatter that's out there. Um, but we're also looking for your contributions. If you know of a story that's out there that we should highlight, we would love to know about it. If you know of a person that's out there blogging already um, about similar topics, we'd love, for you, uh, to, we'd love for you to help us make that connection. Uh, and then we're uh, at or open source way on all the different social media um, things here, Identica, Twitter, Facebook, all that great stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll actually mention this I didn't mention earlier. Uh, we use YouTube to host all our videos. Um, we don't have a lot of video content. We're actually, that's one thing we haven't figured out yet. Most of our video is kind of the talking head thing, which is not really exciting to a lot of people. So we are trying to figure out um, if we can do more things like how-tos, like I described with the music webcast, like I think that's when, when you can explain something and, and give it, make it useful, uh, I think people are going to use it. LinkedIn, we, we basically just created a LinkedIn group to have one. Um, but the working theory is that we, uh, we're trying to figure out how we can allow people to post jobs related to open source there um, without trying to define what open source is from a legal perspective, because that's a big can of worms. Um, so, we're trying to figure that piece out. Um, you know, there's ways that you can have discussions in LinkedIn, um, but frankly, we, we want most of the discussion happening on the site. So, we're, we're toying with this, you know, it's this balance of user engagement and where that happens. And you've kind of you got to be willing to make the sacrifice, too. Now, with, you know, with Facebook doing the new polls, do polls on the website make sense, or do we do polls on Facebook? Is that a different way to engage our audience? Or do we do them in both places? 
we're going to try it out and see what happens. Or maybe you do different versions of the poll. We're not sure yet. We've got to figure it out. Um, that's all I have, but I always leave time because I, I tend to have um, a fair amount of questions. Um, but these is how you can get a hold of me. And I open the floor to questions if you have them. I usually have questions. Yeah? Yeah, these are all third-party tools. So the community mailing list that we have are all mailman. And the, um, the monthly newsletter, I believe it's Eloqua. Can you repeat your question? Sure. Yeah, the question was, um, what kind of tools do we use to manage our mailing list? And, um, and so the, the community mailing list or mailman and the marketing one is Eloqua. Yeah, so the question is, uh, have we considered um, doing a volunteer editor or even a paid editor? Um, so at this point, we're, we're not paying for content. Um, so it's hard, like I said, it, it is kind of a volunteer effort at this point. The way that we have it set up now is that we have a moderator for each community that's a Red Hat employee. And so we were very transparent with that when we launched and said, this is, this is how we're going to approach it now. This could change in the future. But each channel has a, a moderator that's a Red Hat employee, and then their job is to find content, curate authors, uh, and manage their little kind of sub-community on the site. But we, um, we're not really willing to pay for content at this point. It's, it could get pricey. <laughs> right. Anything else, you guys? Have you explored the idea So the question is, have we considered uh, doing a pyramid scheme uh, of, <laughs> of uh, sharing content with your friends? <laughs> now, I was thinking more of like a viral type marketing strategy where you, know, you have your, your converts that in turn are your converts, but not for the purpose of financial purpose. Right, so, um, so the question is, from a marketing standpoint, um, have we tried to force anything viral and I guess you know the answer is it's hard to force the viral thing. Like those things just kind of happen on their own. Um, but what we what we have considered and probably kind of in the works is creating like site advocates. So who are the people that are? Uh, we're actually starting to look at the data from the points that we have now. So we've got about six month worth of uh, points accumulation. We're starting to look at who is commenting the most on the site, who's voting and rating articles the most on the site, and we have those advocates already. We just need to figure out. We need to direct their energy, um, and so we have the data. We're just tr we're trying to marriage that data with the user and what we can do uh, to empower them to basically um, do what they're already doing, but at a larger scale. And I think you know that's it kind of brings back the con um, contributor spotlight. Maybe that's a way that we can do it. This um, highlight the person that hey, this person you know did ten comments on the site last week. They've got something to say. You should go read their comments and you know things like that. So we've thought about it in a way, but not a, not a forced viral marketing campaign, so to speak. Yeah, another question? Sure. So the question was around um, points and badges. Um, do we do anything similar to Foursquare? Yeah, what, what do people get with points? Yeah, so right now there's no, award, there's no reward for it. Um, They'll basically move up the, the scale from uh, newbie to community member to open enthusiast to rock star. And there may be another category in the future because um, we've got, um, well, one thing that we, that we need to do that's on our to-do list is actually to make a page that shows the, the folks that are making some of those achievements. Um, we just haven't gotten to that one yet. Um, and uh, we also do, we do have a few special badges um, that we've made. Uh, if, if 
for folks that were registered with the site before our anniversary, we gave them a special founding members badge. And so that was, uh, we used Trigger to help us with that and basically said if you have a badge before this date and this time, give them this badge. Uh, we also have things like badges for our admins just to identify an admin on the site. Um, we have a special badge for authors. So if they write a, a node that's content type article that gets published, then they get the author badge. And so we're kind of, we're considering, we don't want to go badge crazy. <laughs> We want to make it relevant, um, so we do kind of, we're always creative in thinking of what are other badges might work well with our audience. So we have a few. Okay. Well, the reason I ask is because um, the badges are, I mean, it's sort of a game in a way. It's kind of, you know, in a way there's a competitive element. Right. Which could, could introduce some chicken fights as you go forward. And I'm just wondering if with the badges, can you, can you maybe, uh, for example, if, if I have a badge, In other words, to link it to something that gives me something like a sure. okay. professional, you know. So the comment was basically, is there, is there a way to, um, to use badges uh, that would actually help the user promote something that they're passionate about? So I would say the answer is probably yes. We probably haven't thought of the best way to do that yet or actually um, thought about that. So, but we, now we have thought of, a, we've considered a version of that of can users put Badge is going to be the wrong word, but can users put a promotion for opensource.com on their site? And it would be maybe like the comment that they just did or, you know, something to that effect, something that they wanted to highlight as opposed to something that we say, hey, here's this widget, go put it on your site. Um, but, you know, for the authors, it would be, we might create a, a, a I'll just call it a widget that says, I write for opensource.com. And then they could put that on their site and it could link to their profile page where it lists all the content that they've contributed. So that might be, and we've talked about that, we just haven't, we haven't done it yet, and we haven't figured out the best way to do it. More questions? Yeah? You mentioned earlier that you use uh, models. Yeah. What kind of feedback do you get as far as users either approving or disapproving of using that? Do you use the image captions that go along with that, or do you go the, the route of the, the bad problems and those kind of things? What kind of interaction do you get when those kind of things? Sure. So the question is around uh, how do we use and deploy Mullum on the site? We use the CAPTCHA, so for registration, um, we have the, the, the horrible CAPTCHA thing that you can never read. Um, we also have it on comments, and, um, and I believe if I understand how Mullum works correctly, it has a reputation system on the back end. Um, I've actually been um, working with Dries and some folks on the Mullum team to get Malum working against registration because that's where we're seeing a huge problem is with the Black Hat SEO. Um, currently, as the way I understand it, Malum works really well for comments. So it can pick, it, it does a scan on the plain text um, to scan for a number of links and some kind of hot keywords uh, and that will trigger Malum. I get triggered, I get triggered on G.O all the time for whatever I write. Um, and I'm an, I'm an organizer on my group and so I cannot figure that piece out. Um, However, for us, you know, we have, we have the CAPTCHA and it goes against comments. It works fairly well there, um, but one of the things that we'd like to see with Malum is to actually work against user registration. So conceptually building a database of user registrants that are marked as spam and sharing that with other folks who use Malum. Um, I think it's a great idea. I don't know the best way to implement it, um, but it seems like the structure is there if, it's, if we're already doing the comments um, piece of that and giving that feedback. We go in all the time. We probably have about five to ten comments a day that we have to go in and look at manually that make it through the system. And so uh, we just go in and say, report to Malum as spam, submit. And uh, we've got enough folks helping us out there um, that it works out fairly well so it's not uh, too tedious. Um, but I'd like to see that same principle put against user registrations. Currently, we're just blocking them. Um, if you, if you have to deal with a lot of spam on your sites, um, I was doing it wrong the first time. I was going in and deleting the user accounts, um, and then I found out the best practice was to block them so that they can't come back and register with the same email uh, and same username. So um, I'd like to see those blocked accounts be registered with Malum so that we can actually share, because I'm sure that the spammers are hitting multiple sites at you know, the same time and or multiple times. Um, so how can we together fight spam with Malum? With user registration. Is he the same concept? Um, I used to work for a publishing group, and that's, it comes up all the time. Uh, it's not anymore, it's the end. We have to publish things, and there's a lot of, uh, just like you said, a lot of user registration. Yeah. Where you can kind of, uh, everybody wants to complain about having the capture on there, but you got to do something to 
Yeah, so the comment was with any large site, you're going to see similar things. And we actually do, we get a few complaints about the CAPTCHA. Um, I, I've gotten a, a couple, I guess people are still using IE6, can't figure that one out. Um, but <laughs> apparently it doesn't work sometimes with IE6 and they don't see the CAPTCHA. And so they're like, what do I, it's not going through. And I always ask them, well, what browser are you using? And the culprit is typically IE6. So, I mean, very few. I think most of our audience is hopefully using Firefox or Safari. So, um, we're, we don't see too many of those. Do you have them track what kind of analytics? What kind of Yeah. So, the question was um, what kind of analytics do we use? Um, unfortunately, I don't know of. of great open source tool to recommend. Um, on some of my personal sites, I use Webalizer and um, the things that come with the typical cPanel type stuff. Uh, we use a, um, a product called Omniture, uh, mostly because Red Hat was using it, so we kinda, we're going to tailgate with that. Um, Omniture is great. I mean, it, it collects all the data that we would ever need, and we don't have time to analyze it, um, a lot of it. So it's mostly if we have a very strategic thing that we're looking into, We'll go in and um, we have a daily report, a weekly report, and a monthly report that's focused on our content. Um, but we're also trying to figure out what else do we need to be monitoring that Omniture can, can give us. Um, so we can go in and like I'll typically run ad hoc reports that will show me um, where our traffic is coming from because that's always interesting. Um, late, last time I looked, like we get about 5 to 7% of our traffic from Twitter which I, I mean, it shows you kind of how well we, you know, we've built up that outlet for us. Um, I didn't mention earlier, but so the social media pieces for us are basically our distribution system for content. Um, you know, that paired with the email. I mean, unless somebody's coming to the site every day, I mean, this is a way to kind of say, here's our new article or our strategy on, on Twitter or what we call it, we just call it Twitter and we internally understand it means put it on Facebook, Twitter and Identica. What we do when we have a new article that's, um, that's published, uh, we use a tool called Hootsuite to manage um, some of our, to manage our social media. Um, actually, we'll have it up so I can maybe give you a little sneak preview. I usually don't do this. <laughs> um, so this is a screenshot of Hootsuite. Um, it works kind of like other, like TweetDeck and other other things, it gives you different streams. So this is my, uh, this is my personal stream. So I have my Twitter home feed um, where I get mentioned. And then um, when I go to conferences, I usually create, um, I look for the hashtag or the conference, um, the conference buzzword. And so I, this is how I've been keeping track right here of what's been happening at the Southeast Linux Fest. So I look for the, the self 2011 hashtag and the SE Linux Fest um, name and I can see the conversation that's happening at the conference. Um, but I'll switch over, enough about me, uh, I'll switch over, we have, um, on our open source way, when we have a new article come out, we send it, we use Ping FM to send it to Twitter and Identica at the same time. Uh, we were doing that um, with Facebook as well, but what we've figured out is to send it, um, to actually send it to those media outlets at separate times. So usually we'll get it out on Twitter first, uh, and then Facebook will be about an hour or two hours behind. Um, we, we're, and we're also conscious of time zones. So you, I play the time zone game. If we have content that might be relevant to the West Coast, we try to get it at a time appropriate for the West Coast when somebody might pick it up. If we have content that might be relevant to Asia Pacific area, we might tweet it at nine or 10 o'clock at night. Um, the biggest advantage that I like for Hootsuite is, uh, or two, um, we have multiple users in here. So it's not just me in here managing all the stuff. We actually have a team of people that can go in and look, um, if I scroll over this way, um, we have a, a list of our sent tweets and then our, our pending tweets. So we actually set stuff we tweet in the future. Um, this is great because we can, when, like as I mentioned, when we have a new article come out, we get it out on the wire fairly quickly. So we, if we have content that's ready, we usually auto publish it at about six or seven in the morning. And then we'll get it on the wire at like nine o'clock in the morning, east, east, Eastern time. Then we'll, we'll go through the content and we'll pull out sound, sound bites and we'll set up about two to four additional tweets for that content over a two to three week period at random times, like two in the afternoon, seven at night, um, those type of things. Because we want to, 
we want people to read the content, so we kind of stretch it out. If, particularly on Twitter, if you're like me, I'm not going that far back in time to see what happened on Twitter. I might go back an hour, two if you're lucky, um, unless I'm looking at some of my streams, like I went back and saw that some of the conversation that happened last night for the conference, so I, I went back a little bit in time there. But for typically, I'm not gonna go to somebody's Twitter and, and look at what happened the last two days. Um, so that's a little secret sauce that we use uh, from a content perspective. We also will look through the comments. Um, if there's a lot of comments on the article, we'll pull out user comments and we'll tweet those out. We'll do, gonna quote, you know, this is a great, you know, it's not this is a great article. We'll pull out a, a good little sound bite and, if, and then I'll actually do some due diligence, see if I can find that person on Twitter so we can give them a little bit of recognition, you know, with their Twitter handle and, uh, and tweet that out. Like, hey, here's part of the conversation. Joe said, you know, I can't believe this isn't open and then a link to the article. Um, so little social media tips here. I should do a little social media section. Um, what else do we do? Uh, and then, like I said, we haven't figured the Facebook part out, so we usually just publish the article to Facebook once. We don't want to have the, you know, you don't want to see the same article like four times on, on that Facebook page. Go ahead, keep asking. <laughs> Yeah, so the question is around, uh, are, is, it, is there a way to use um, things like trigger, Drupal modules to do this for us? I don't know that much about trigger, so I'm gonna have to go look into that. Um, we do, we have, um, I might be able to, let me see if I can pull this up really quick. We have Twitter integrated um, into, I don't know the right terminology, the stacked menu at the bottom that you showed earlier. So let me, I'll just go in here and I'll, I'll, do, I'll show you the, the screen that we have. So you, what will happen when we publish is we'll come down here and we'll highlight this post to Twitter. And then we click that and it audit. So this is integrated with our open source feeds account and it's also integrated with our Bitly account that we have set up. Bitly, if you're not familiar with it, is a URL shortening service that actually has some really good stats. They've improved their stats over the last few weeks. Um, we also add um, an Omniture tracking code to that URL before it gets shortened so that we can track um, how effective our social media use is. Um, if, we, if I were to hit submit now, this would actually send out a tweet to our open source feeds account. Um, and it would include the title and the short URL. And so this open source feeds is basically, it was, as I described earlier, um, an RSS feed of our content. So we did that on Friday morning. So we hit the Twitter button, hit submit, and it shows up there. We do, yeah, so, um, so the question was, do we use scheduler? I don't know if we use, I don't know the name of the particular module. I go in here and I use uh, article workflow and we are able to um, change the state from review to published and then set a time in the future. Like I said, we usually set it for six in the morning. So at the end of my day, I'm going in seeing what content is ready and then we probably schedule about half our content and then the other part of it is, hey, this one's ready, go publish it. <laughs> We've got it ready, let's go do it. Um, so we, we publish it when it's ready. But we, we found that we're more successful when we have things that are, that are auto-published because I, the user, I think, is expecting some sort of consistency on that end of, hey, there's gonna be a new article every day at eight o'clock in the morning or something to that effect. Um, so we try to have at least one new article ready in the morning and then for us, we don't, we don't like to do like three at a time we, I guess we kind of, our approach is we do kind of one morning, one mid-morning, and then one afternoon, because we, we're having about two to four art, new articles a day on the site. Another thing I'll mention, um, we, one of our strategies, uh, because getting content is so hard, or getting like kind of full original content is hard, we, we actually will, 
we'll um, aggregate other content that we find that's relevant to our site. But we also do this, um, we use the same article, uh, I don't know if I have one readily available. Um, we call them open threads. So it's the same content type as an article. It's just more of like a question. It's like, what would you open source today? Or you might have seen it on our little uh, table that we had at the event. You know, what, what's something that you would like to see more open? And so we'll just kind of throw out this question to see if we can generate a thread of conversation around it. Um, so it's kind of something quick for us to kind of get out there. It might be newsworthy. Um, you know, but we're, we're kind of leaning more towards doing polls. So we actually give people some options to make it a little bit easier. But all of our polls, if I you know, drill through on um, this one. Uh, so we, this one was a, this one about Skype, open source alternatives to Skype, um, was a reaction to the news um, when Microsoft purchased Skype. And we actually had one previous to this uh, related to, um, you know, would Microsoft open source Skype? And we had a, a, an interesting uh, comments that occur on that. But, um, oh, I just clicked on something bad. Um, yeah, so here, here's a whole bunch of comments on that thread. But anyway, uh, we do allow people to comment on the threads to, or excuse me, we do allow people to comment on the polls. So if they're, we always get the, you should have done this option. We always get those, so it's fun. I think I've got time for maybe one more question. And I'll be hanging out afterwards too if you don't wanna ask in front of the camera. Well, great, well, thanks everyone for attending today. Uh, if you have any feedback or um, any other questions, just let me know. Thanks. An OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.